going on the phones and uh we we do it every week our weekly update with lieutenant governor uh josh denorio good morning lt hey good morning i was just listening to the conversation and the the first thing that comes to mind is you know that um as we continue to relax this these conditions we need to be cognizant that there are more than 30 active cases of COVID still on this island and i think this is a reminder that uh, we really need to watch where we're going, document where we're going, and take the precautions. And wear that mask, wash those hands, and, you know, really just be safe. And in this case, I'm just thinking about if I were a parent, you know, I want to know more information. And I totally can uh, feel you, Sabrina. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I would want to know who tested positive, what part of the school did they work in. I already know. Oh, she already knows. So if I just wow. keep pumping you, you're going to tell me? I'm not. Oh, darn it. <laughs> All right. Okay, LT. Sorry you had to well, witness that little... <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, that, I, I'm, I haven't heard... This is the first time hearing about it, too, so right. I'm yeah. curious to see what the details are. I, I did want to, um, uh, I guess, wrap in a couple things to this call. The first is that, you know, you've been hearing some of the uh, announcements, and you'll hear more details about... Really, in Illinois, for Illinois, well, you're you're breaking up, uh, LT. Are you there? Ship of um, GVB. Wait, yeah, I'm sorry. Can you can you just rewind a little bit because uh, you were breaking up? Sorry, I'm in transit. Oh. So, um, I wanted to just uh, push out, uh, you know, to stay tuned for the details. But on June 27th, as you uh, likely have been reporting. There is a, a challenge for an island-wide cleanup, and we're very fortunate that GVB and GHRA and um, the business partners are coming, um, but uh, we're working with the government and the mayors, and I just really want to extend that to homeowners. You know, mm-hmm. honor before, before June 27th, clean up around your house, um, you know, the, maybe the rights of way that are near your property, uh, your places of business, uh, you know, just being conscious and, and trying to participate in this effort would be would be excellent. Right. Um, and the other thing I wanted to, unrelated to this, the other thing, and I'm not sure if anybody talked to about this, but it is Pride Month, and I'm really happy that the Supreme Court of the United States uh, issued out a landmark decision today. Have you talked about this yet? In the yeah, we ran show? we we ran it this morning. So, you know, I wanted to say that this is good news because in the last week, there have been three federal actions that really have been done to push back and suppress um, equality for trans people. The first one was um, Secretary of Education DeVos threatened the state of Connecticut for them allowing transgendered students to play in sports. And she um, went and threatened federal funding uh, that supports their uh, school district. The second, under uh, Housing and Urban Development, prohibited um, and banned transgendered individuals from taking up shelter um, in shelters designated for sexes that they identify with. Mm -hmm. And the third major one um, is the revision of the... um, Affordable Care Act and the protections of trans persons to uh, access health care. Now, all these three actions, I would think now, um, will be further examined with this latest um, Supreme Court decision. And I'm just, uh, I just uh, wanted to um, say that in Guam in 2015, the local legislature passed the the uh, Gender Equality Act for empo- against employment discrimination. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are still, as you know, a lot of trans people serving in the military that are um, that are actively being purged. uh, And there are those that are being prohibited now from joining. So although, you know, obviously we're dealing with a public health crisis, I really felt compelled to bring this up and and um, be very grateful and thankful that despite us having the. Uh, very conservative Supreme Court majority. Mm-hmm. Right, um, right. They were able to really come out and do the right thing and make sure that equality uh, means equality for everyone uh, and uh, independent of your uh, sexual orientation or um, 
your sexual identity. Right. LT, I'm sure if it had come out any other way, we probably would have maybe seen more riots on top of everything that's happening with Black Lives Matter. So, I, sure, I mean, I love the timing of it during Pride Month, and you're right. I, I mean, I, I knew that the ruling would go this way. I had a feeling it would, but with the conservative uh, judges there, I mean, it could have easily gone the other way. And what's sad about that is we might not have even been surprised by it. Right. Exactly. This is a very different experience that we find ourselves um, living in all aspects here on the island and even in our country and in the world. You know, uh, but um, I, I just wanted to point that out. Mm-hmm. No, you, you brought up June 27th about the give us a moment cleanup, but June 27th is also another uh, significant date, I believe. Um, and Lazia was on our show last week. Isn't there some sort of a virtual uh, uh, global pride commemoration on that day? On the 27th? Are, are you there? Hello? LT? Oh, oh, man. Okay. I'm pretty sure a call back. What, is there, Bree? Is there a... a right. I want to say that... Because um, she, she was mentioning how they were recording uh, a, a video. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're supposed to be... I thought it was on um, July... Or June, excuse me. June 27th, a... Uh, an event. It's ours. Our event. Um, it's like a global. Is it a global parade? I think we I got it back. Yeah. Uh, were you able to catch that it, LT? It, uh, ju- we June? Got, I'm sorry. No worries. I totally lost you guys. Yeah. yeah. I, I was mentioning how June 27th. Uh, that's not just. It's significant for the the island wide be- beautification and, and cleanup event, but it's also another. Uh, Day that, according to Lazia, when she was on the show uh, last week, it's a, a, some sort of a global virtual event for Pride Month. Yeah, there is a uh, because there is uh, no because of all, a lot of the Pride celebrations are canceled or postponed or downsized because of the public health qu- uh, threat. Um, there is a, a virtual Pride, uh, and if you're interested in looking at it, you can just do a quick search, um, uh, internet search for uh, Global Pride, and there's a link, uh, and they're, they are going to be featuring um, a bunch of video messages from um, throughout the world, and also featuring some speakers, so, mm-hmm. um, and so for us, I believe the, I need to double check the, um, but I, I, on whether or not that means we're staying laid up at late night on the 27th or into mm. the 28th, because <laughs> the <laughs> because of the time change. Right. I think all but but Guam all has a message in, in, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so they asked us to submit one, and one of them, uh, and it's kind of interesting because if you watch it, it might, you might feel it might be dated uh, at this point with the decision because one of the messages I sent was uh, recognizing the, the um, efforts of Guam to uh, protect LGBTQ residents from employment discrimination uh, back Uh, in 2015 and calling for the same to be done nationally with passage of the Equality Act. Um, And and so uh, it kind of uh, obviously the now today there's uh, the employment discrimination um, is going to be prohibited, but there are still areas in housing, education and health that we need to make sure follow suit. And so there is still a lot more work to be done. But I think for me, uh, Bree and uh, Chris, um, the one thing for me on Pride is I always want to maybe reach out to parents, um, relatives of LGBTQ people, especially youth, that are struggling with this. Uh, many parents, um, because of religious differences, um, you know, become alienated or alienate their kids from themselves because of this conflict in their value system. And like I said, um, in the past, and I've talked to um, young people and to some parents, you know, just trying to open your heart to your kids despite um, their uh, sexual preference and focusing on all the wins that they can have in their life uh, and steer them away from the other path. The other path is alienating or kicking your kids out for them to become homeless, for them to um, end up having substance abuse problems uh, for them uh, committing suicide. Those are all high-risk areas for gay youth. Yeah, you still hear that, LT. You know, I mean, there there are some, uh, I guess, success stories, uh, you know, I mean, in my family where 
you have uh, an older one uncle whose child is out and they just don't have that relationship. Uh, but then on the other side, you see the total opposite. But you're right. I mean, still here in 2020, still hearing uh, families on Guam are divided where, you know, one child has uh, come out and the parents or the, you know, one of the parents or both in some cases just want to have nothing to do with them at all. Right. They're embarrassed or shamed or downright um, disagree with, right. with their kid. But, you know, think about the humanity. Think about your kids when they first came into the world. Think about all the positive things. And sometimes you can't reconcile the difference in morality and the difference in values, but you can't take away from the love that you your instinct would have for you to love your child or for the children to love the parents and mm -hmm. I think pride is a good opportunity for people that are struggling with this to reach out to their loved ones and um, and try and uh, buy back or get back all the time that's been wasted and lost because of that. LT we've got to ask you about this uh, latest development with uh, Congressman uh, St. Nicholas where where a lot of people thought that this whole thing would end with the Office of Congressional Ethics, it has not ended. Instead, it has escalated into the formation of an entire ethics committee, subcommittee, to investigate our delegate for the charges, uh, the allegations that we're all familiar with. But then there were some new things in there about um, him lying to investigators and also trying to obstruct this investigation and I think a lot of media has glossed over that fact whether intentional or not and I think that is, to me is the biggest news out of this latest development is that there are people in our nation's capital who believe that Delegate Michael St. Nicholas lied to investigators and tried to obstruct the investigation into the allegations against him. I know you, you watch the news, I know you're well informed so we just wanted to get your take on it, Lieutenant Governor. Well, I guess the um, the truth will come out soon enough. I guess uh, you know when I came from the court system, so I'll, you know I'm, people make allegations and uh, people are presumed to be uh, innocent until proven guilty, including in an administrative process. Um, and I, I just say out of respect for that office that you know I I, uh, I expect that the congressman and his staff and former staff cooperate with the. Um, investigators be truthful and i think that they'll make a determination and we'll all um see what that is but i'll still would despite all of this i would and uh, the differences we have in policy i would still give him the benefit of the doubt because um uh he still is entitled to the due process mm -hmm. this despite the fact that at the beginning of all this he was claiming that uh this was um a conspiracy right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry well, you know, I mean, he said it was a conspiracy from high ranking members of his own party. And I'm only assuming I mean, when I think of high ranking I, members, I, I, I fit <laughs> his bill, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pretty like up I there. Said, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I guess I would just say that, you know, in the end, um, you just have to uh, people need to just be truthful and then we'll see where the uh, case takes us. But, you know, I mean. I think the fair thing is to wait and see this process um, run its course. I do recognize that the naming of the subcommittee is an escalation of that. Uh, and I think that this subcommittee has the power to subpoena and at a certain point its proceedings will be public. So right. we will all have an opportunity to take a look at it. It's uh, done in a very bi bipartisan way where there are two Democrats and two Republicans that are in this committee and whatever their findings are the balance of the ethics committee are the ones the balance of the membership are the ones that are going to make a determination on what course of action if any will be taken or you know to go in and um and uh, support the facts that maybe the congressman has submitted on his behalf so mm -hmm. what do you make of uh, the congressman's um lack of willingness to, to kind of come out uh, to the media. I mean, this is, has been an issue throughout his term. We see a lot of uh, Facebook uh, messages. We I ask, think you guys are number one that he doesn't uh, answer the calls right. Based on the Don't sound too happy to say that. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I've been watching. Yeah. Um, no, so, so how, I mean, LT, the way I look at it, it's like, I mean, take you, for example, right? 
I mean, you know, we got questions. You still call. You answer the questions, and that's all we really can do in the media is ask the question, and you give us an answer, and then it's kind of like one and done in a way, mm-hmm. right? So I just feel yeah. like it would just be so easy for Congressman St. Nicholas to kind of well, come I out think, and, and do this. I think, I think for sure the people... You know, I, I think that uh, he should consider, you know, sending a message to the people of Guam and maybe give them assurances that despite this uh, situation going, that he still is able to remain focused on his job. This is a very critical time. Yeah. Um, the federal aid that is um, uh, here for the pandemic, the military relations, political status, Federal relations relations and all of the federal issues, federal territorial issues, are some of the top things that require the full attention and the best uh, of every public official that is involved in it. And, Amen. Um, I think that uh, you know I would I would like to uh, see him give those assurance to the people, and you know set aside all these differences and let's focus on what we can do together. Mm-hmm. Right, you're right because I, I think it. I mean. In all of our government, I mean, no disrespect to uh, Governor and Lieutenant Governor, but our delegate, right? He's the point man uh, with the feds. Yeah, and, no, it's true. And I pay attention, and I haven't seen, we've seen Kalili come out. We've seen Kalili pass out food. We've seen Kalili meet with the local leaders. But St. Nicholas has been off <laughs> island since before uh-huh. COVID. And when you look at his Facebook, it's like he's making itchy bang. Have you or the governor uh, had any conversations with the, the congressman? I mean, actual conversations or talk, phone call, anything like that? Zoom? Uh, since no, for me, not. Uh, no, no. We, it's too bad. Do you uh, aware of the governor? Early on, uh, early on uh, the governor and him were texting about, um, you know, the when the White House was trying to really understand what was going on and what we were doing and, uh, we've been very fortunate, and this is really, really strange. Can I just tell you this is, I just have to tell everybody uh, that know how, um, uh, I guess, um, how I'm uh, really identify with the, with the Democrats, but I've got to say the Trump administration's intergovernmental affairs office has been really excellent to partner with. Uh, they've been, it's so interesting for me to see this, um, and I don't mind saying that um, the communication and access that we have, including you saw that the evidence of that when we were able to get the uh, Treasury Department to um, be in line with us when we were paying our reparations right. out. Uh, and then now with the, with, uh, the Roosevelt, with uh, COVID, um, you know, uh, trying to identify assets, it's, they, they have been excellent if we did not have that i think that we would be certainly um in a in a lesser state than we are today and, and uh, i do also want to you know uh, uh, express my thanks to congressman Kilili, who has been um, very proactive including contacting us and uh, offering the help on education front on the interior front yeah, like you got the delegate from NMI calling you, offering help, but our own delegate is not calling. Yeah, like, well, you know, we're no, seriously, people. only yeah, that's, text message. That's crazy, N- really. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, it's a awkward uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, so, all right. Uh, so. <laughs> like I said, always willing to talk. Uh, you know, despite uh, him and his office going through this, there still is you know, reason and still time for us to work together and focus on the things that are important to people. Right. Um, okay, can we, no, I was going to say, if we could go ahead and get, get an update based on the updates uh, that you got. I know we ask about homeless all the time. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Is it's there been any mouth. movement? Um, <laughs> can I just, I'll be honest with you and tell you that there, uh, I've been counting now that this is the fourth time that we had to, to go back out. Uh, we are undergoing there is active procurement going on right now um but uh we've had to amend our plans four times already uh to try and uh, meet the kind of the situation going on right now mm-hmm. um and i would just tell you honestly that uh we're still working it's still we're behind schedule this is one area that uh we i don't feel that we're ahead yet uh, but i'm not 
hopeless. We're still trying to push things, and I expect I'm really expecting that I will have better news to tell you uh, next Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm doing a considerable amount of work on that right now. Mm -hmm. hey, uh, something out of the land trust. I don't know if you uh, saw this, but uh, the uh, governor nominated uh, someone to replace uh, the chair, uh, Pika Farron, whose term had, had expired. Uh, was there any overture at all made to uh, keep uh, Pika on, or do you think that that was just a relationship that had run its course? Well, uh, I would say that she had, obviously, she's been running, uh, finishing up a term that started in the last administration. Mm -hmm. um, there's another vacancy coming up. Um, and uh, I've been recently, I've been getting some messages and getting phone calls from people advocating uh, for uh, Pika and her continued involvement in the land trust. I'm pretty certain that um, the governor is, you know, listening, considering all of that, and we'll see what happens. But I think that, um, you know, I always appreciate people that are willing to volunteer and get involved mm -hmm. so okay. but on on that I, I would just say that you know it's still where i mean as recent as yesterday i was um speaking to some people about that yeah, right. yeah. i just happened to go on the uh, legislature's you website know, and, and, and i and found that just say another that nomination was made or appointment was made for somebody else to replace her right so I was wondering what right. happened so i'll just point out for example right um on boards um, uh, there uh, several weeks ago, there was a whole bunch of um, press about Dave Lott right, and his right. on the historic mm -hmm. review board. Right. And you know, Dave and the governor met finally. Um, but you know, prior to that, um, he had indicated he wasn't interested in being reappointed, and he uh, changed his mind. He still wants to serve. The governor uh, was uh, spoke to him, and he has been reappointed, or I believe, in the process of being reappointed. So. Sometimes it's just miscommunication, or yeah. you just need to be able to talk to people to find out really what's going on. Right. Okay. Is there any other updates? You know, we had somebody on the line earlier today. He was really, really just upset and really frustrated because he, from what he understood and from what I believe phone calls he's had with, I believe, uh, Dio. No, with DOL, I believe, regarding uh, PUA, PUA and mm -hmm. FPUC. And the fact that uh, because he is uh, enrolled in the SNAP program, that there's a possibility that he might lose his SNAP benefits because he would be receiving, or if he were to receive, a PUA and FPUC. And I, I need I to, I just was reading some of those articles and... Um, I need to find out more information about that. Right. Yeah, he um, was really, really I wasn't concerned because that it was. Yeah, I need a. I, I need to get more visibility on it. And you know, the way I see it is, um, SNAP is first of all, SNAP program also is dynamic, meaning that you know it requires people to continue their to continue to certify their eligibility for en enrollment. Right. Mm -hmm. I just need to find out from the techni the technocrats what's going on and what the situation is. Yeah. And right. so he's saying that. He has been uh, made uh, ineligible because of uh, the um, uh, unemployment benefits that he'll get paid. He was basically saying that he was informed by public yeah. health that if uh, he applied for the uh, well, Department of Labor, or the unemployment assistance, that he would lose his SNAP no. benefits because it would it would bump him above the eligibility requirement. Right, and I know that some employers are, you know, this is a... On top of that, nationally, there is a lot of discussion about how some of the people that are going to be receiving the unemployment benefits are going to be receiving benefits that are a bit more than what they're already making. Mm -hmm. There's a little something there, but I, I'm, I'm uh, actually, I have that on my radar to um, find out from all of the eligibility specialists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let us know. Oh, I was going to say, there's also the issue uh, that somebody else has uh, called us about with the Department of Administration and this uh, supposed massive uh, backlog of processing of applications for the program and Salapi Zudini Tao Tao program. Yeah, and so that one, every all complete applications um, ha are have been processed rather timely. The backlog are all of the incomplete applications that you know maybe they're and that's uh, when I spoke to you. Right. Um, I think last week where you know uh, we're we're giving up until June thirtieth for people to be contacted and to bring back the missing portions of their record mm -hmm. um, as they uh, go forward. Some of them are duplicates. Yesterday, um, uh, we were informed that uh, they already uh, found five hundred 
um, applications that were for duplicate, meaning um, some people in a household applied on by themselves, uh, but they've also been listed in households, and that's some of the stuff they're reconciling. But I think that um, we have a large number of people that are working on that right now. And Programa Salapido from the DOA uh, perspective, I'd say I've, uh, their processing has been um, on point so far. Um, and for me right now, the big one I'm monitoring every day is pushing and pushing for uh, the uh, PUA uh, claims to be paid and monitoring what's going on with the vendor and the processing and um, the processing centers. Are you aware if uh, DOL has uh, come up with that final payment process plan with the with the banks? Because I know yes. that that was one of the things I'm, that uh, I, Dave was yes, talking about. Yes, that's done already. Um, I think now, uh, in fact, I just saw, read some email early this morning um, uh, that I'm going to talk about in this meeting I'm about to head to that indicates that there's some bunch of progress that's been made. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything well, have else? a good day, guys. Yeah. Thanks, LT. Thank and you. And Sabrina, I'm going to keep my ear out to the situation a bit, St. Anthony, but I would just say this is a reminder to everybody, you know, again, be very um, uh, diligent in what you're doing every day and uh, you and uh, try and mitigate the risk. All right. All right. Okay. Talk Thank to you. Later. Okay. Wash okay, your hands. Take care. Okay. Bye. 847. Uh, we'll take a short break and let's go switch sides a little bit. Flip it and get the Republican Party's Juan Carlos Benitez on the line at 847. It is the KUAM News takeover of Guam's favorite containing COVID. And